All right, we are back with another Jackson podcast. This is a very exclusive episode. This is almost like an emergency episode. Uh, we have two very, very talented fighters. As you guys have seen them in their last couple battles, these guys have been, um, you know, I would say on the rise. And a lot of people look at these guys as two upcoming UFC superstars in the making. We have Diego and Alessandro. What's going on, boys? ¿Qué onda, güey? ¿Cómo andan? Sí, así en que andamos ya ansiosos por el podcast. Oh, yes. ¿Cómo se, ¿Cómo se sienten? ¿Cómo se sienten estar aquí en California, aquí en Jackson? Muy bien, muy bien. Pues ya es la segunda vez que venimos aquí a Jackson, ¿no? Y pues la primera vez grabando el podcast. Y pues muy contento, pues muy emocionado. That they're super excited. This is our second time coming to Jackson, but first time the podcast. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. But it's good for the... Oh, yeah. It's good for the, okay, so everybody watching at home, we are going to have a translator for this podcast because Diego and Alessandro speak a very uh, unique dialect of Spanish. Um, it's half Brazilian, Portuguese mixed with Spanish. So we had to bring a special interpreter and uh, Jacob, who also is part of their agency. What's the name of your agency? Iridium Sports. Iridium Sports is going to be out here and uh, he's going to help us get through this so that way you guys can kind of get a little behind the scenes of the boys. Okay. So we want to we want to kick it off um, off the break with Diego. Um, you know, he called out Bryce Mitchell after his last win. Right. Yeah. And he steps into the, you know, Bryce. I don't want to I don't want to say this in a mean way because he's going to be on the podcast soon. But Doug Nasty stepped up to fight Josh Emmett. Yeah. And he basically like got ran over. Yeah. Um, who does he want to see next? So, obvio que queremos pelear contra Bryce del Tug Nasty, pero el resultado es que tuvo, pero eso no cambia. Pero, ¿quién tienes en tu mente para pelear en tu próxima pelea? ¿Cómo tienes idea o te importa? No, pues ya saben, ¿no? Nosotros siempre nos gusta pelear con los mejores de la categoría, ¿no? Yo creo que mi objetivo en UFC siempre ha sido este. Y, pues bueno, tenía el deseo de pelear contra, contra Bryce, pero infelizmente no se va, no se va a dar, pues sí. acaba de perder. Y, pues bueno, quien sea de Renke, pues para mí está bien. So you're saying, like, obviously, like, you know, he wants to fight the best of the best in the organization. He wants to be, you know, one of the best guys in the division. And, um, you know, obviously he wanted to fight Bryce, but that didn't happen. So whoever is in the rankings that he can fight, whoever makes sense for him, you know, he'll fight, step up, whoever. Um, and this is for, for Diego. Does the hair give him superpowers? Tu, tu pelo te da como poder en la jaula. <laughs> Pues podemos decir que sí, ¿no? Las veces que he tratado de cortar mi pelo, pues me ha ido muy mal, ¿no? <laughs> He's saying that, yeah, it's like a superpower. Every time he tries to cut his hair, like, it doesn't go that good, so. It's like half Justin Bieber, half, you know, Joe Dirt <laughs> yeah. with the mullet. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where, where does it, the side, like, can you give him a side? Let me see the side profile. Like de this, lado. Wow. This is a party wow. in the back. Dale, dale un como volteado así, dale un, uno chido así. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, okay. Wow, wow. <laughs> it's luscious, too. It's like, it's, it's, there's a lot of girth to the hair, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah relax, he ain't a little excited. <laughs> um, is he ever going to cut it or no? Que tienes idea de cortarlo o no? No, pues no, la verdad que pues siempre he usado mi pelo así desde hace mucho tiempo y pues por ahorita no está en mis planes cortarlo. Yeah, he doesn't have any plans on cutting it right now. He's had his hair like that for a long time, so he wants to keep it that way. For Alessandro, Moreno versus Albazi. ¿Qué, qué, Who does he think wins? ¿Qué opinas de la pelea de Brandon y Albazi? Pues yo creo que era una pelea que ya se esperaba, ¿no? Por la, por la posición que tiene al, al base en, en el ranking. Uh -huh. Pero pues yo veo a pues Brendo mucho más superior que él en la parte de experiencia y, y que es alguien más técnico y también pues ya, ya ha vivido más guerras ahí adentro, ¿no? Con güeyes más duro. Uh -huh. uh, he's saying that, obviously, that's a fight that a lot of people have been waiting for. You know, that, that that's a fight that's going to answer a lot of questions in the division. Uh, but he thinks that Brandon's going to take it just because he's more technical. He's been in more wars, and uh, that's how and, he feels like and, wins and that. And you fought Albazi before. What do you think of his skills? Y tú peleaste contra Albazi. ¿Cómo qué opinas de de su estilo de de pelea o de él como peleador? Pues no quiero decir que soy más que él, pero fue una pelea en corto aviso. No no lo sentí tan fuerte como todos lo lo decía, no, pues alguien que ya estaba ahí en, en el, como, Eso era cuando estabas enfermo, ¿verdad? No, también me me, me fremé, ajá, no, o sea, eh, son pocas las las personas que saben eso, no no quiero que piensen que porque estaba enfermo yo yo perdí sí. la pelea, no, pero solo eh, solo yo sé lo que cómo me estaba sintiendo ahí arriba, pero te digo, yo pude sentirlo ahí, ¿no? Pude ver que cómo, cómo peleaba él, ¿no? Y y, y creo que eh, hasta el segundo round, hasta la mitad de, de tercer round, eh, di, di una pelea que, él, eh, que no esperaba. Uh -huh. no, yo creo que él se, se sorprendió un poco conmigo y, 
Y, y por cómo yo me sentía, ¿no? Pues es sí. algo, pues para mí, ¿no? Yo creo que si estuviera yo al 100% también con, con FUCAM, que es algo que, que, que incluye mucho, ¿no? Que, que influencia sí. mucho también. Eh, yo, yo me veo en un futuro peleando con él otra vez y estoy seguro que se le ganó. Yeah, he was saying, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but like during, that was a short notice fight and he came in, he didn't tell me this, I actually went in the, the hotel room and he was like curled up in a ball. I'm like, dude, what's wrong? He's like, mm -hmm. he's had a flu for three days while cutting weight. Like, I, I, obviously like he doesn't want to discredit his win, you know, he doesn't want to make excuses, but uh, had he have had a full camp and, and been healthy, he feels that the result could have gone a different way and he still thinks you know, taking Al Bazi to three rounds, like he wasn't afraid of him. He didn't really feel fear of his power. Um, but he feels like obviously, you know, hopefully he can get that fight back and, and the results will be different. In, in terms of, uh, for Diego, in terms of the, the rankings, you know, UFC hasn't added him to the featherweight rankings yet. Does he feel like another win will get him that, especially after that last performance where he just dismantled Pat with that, you know, first round KO? <laughs> Que ahorita, como el UFC no te tiene adentro del ranking, como usted piensa que con otro, que vences otro oponente en tu próxima que sí te van a meter o, o te importa el ranking ahorita o qué opinas? Pues la verdad es que pues, en este juego sí importa el ranking, no importa porque pues va escalando pues, para llegar a pelear por el título, ¿no? Uh -huh. Este... Yo, pues definitivamente mi próxima pelea quiero pelear con un ranqueado, ¿no? Es, yeah. es mi objetivo, es lo que tenemos también platicado. Y, pero si no me da un ranqueado, pues tenemos que pasarle pues, por el que sigue, ¿no? Y esperar sí. nuestra oportunidad en el ranking. Sí, pienso que también el ranking a veces no importa tanto porque mira como el como Chito uh -huh. peleando contra el campeón ahorita. Sí. Uh, he's saying that, like, for him, rankings is not, you know, Like it's it's super important, right? But it's not at the same time, right? Like he'll fight whoever, but obviously to get to the title, like he has to beat ranked fighters. If he gets a ranked fighter his next fight, great. If he doesn't, he's gonna just keep doing whatever the company needs in order to, you know, to get to that next level. In terms of Alessandro, like these guys move around like the Ninja Turtles. They're like jumping on <laughs> bikes over here. They're skating. They run around the place. Like last night was Christmas day yeah. and they were here till midnight running around the place, doing whatever they want. They're like, yeah. they're literally just like Wolverines. So, they they don't matter. Like, how did they become such best friends? Ustedes dos cuando se, se juntan como hacen un pinche desmadre a donde llega. Um, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo se creó esta relación? ¿Cómo, cómo, se, ¿Cómo se sientan ya como más como hermanos? ¿Cómo, cómo se, se inició esa relación? Pues es algo que se ha dado, ¿no? no sí. nunca, nunca forzamos nada. Y pues yo creo que hemos, 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 hemos llegado hasta aquí eh, por eso, ¿no? Creo que eso es clave tener, sí. Pues somos un, un desmadre con, <risa> cuando, cuando hay que ser, pero pues también cuando hay que ser serios, ¿no? Nosotros sí. eh, sabemos eh, poner un top, ¿no? Pues poner un, un stop, sí. ¿no? Entonces, pues... A chambear. Ahí, ahí, ahí era el momento de, de, de divertirse, ¿no? Pues sí. de, de disfrutar la vida, que es lo, lo que más busco. Y también pienso que mucho de eso viene de, pues, de dónde iniciaron en llegando a México hasta el momento. Es, sí. Eso you're saying is like... Like, yeah, we have a lot of fun, but I think that's just like, we've never forced it. We've just, yeah. it's just always been natural for us. Like yeah. we've always been close. And I think a lot of it also comes with like, hey, knowing when to get serious, when to like, hey, we got to like mm -hmm. train. And I mean, watching these two train, like I've been in the same training room as them, like, and it's, it's absolute, it's the same yeah, chaos, yeah. but I think it's more organized chaos, right? And they also know when to like, hey, this is fun. And hey, this is like, They've been working, you know, when they got to Mexico, right? I mean, seven years of hard work for both of them, right? Having to work as gardeners in Mexico, right? The transition from Brazil to Mexico, like, this is all a dream. Cuando entrenamos, parecemos que somos enemigos. He's saying that when they train, it looks like we're enemies. Like, we're, we're <laughs> like mortal enemies. How did Alessandro, how did you become friends with him? Like, you see this guy in the gym, he's trying to ride wheelies, he's skateboarding, he's running around going crazy. He's, one, he's a lethal fighter. What made you want to become friends with him? ¿Cómo, cómo, cuando era la primera vez que, que conociste a Alessandro y cómo pensaste, oh, quiero ser amigo con este, con este tipo? No, pues si dio, no, si dio la, 
las cosas, pues yo creo que tenía que pasar porque teníamos un amigo en común que estaba en Brasil ah, okay. y cuando yo me vine a México me dijo, oye, tengo un amigo que está en México y pues nada más le platicamos con uh -huh. Facebook porque Alessandro estaba en otra ciudad. Ah, okay. Pero pues bueno, éramos, somos de la misma ciudad, pues de mismo deporte. Sí. Yo creo que nosotros dos teníamos las ganas de salir adelante, ¿no? Sí. Y pues ahí cuando nos conocemos, este, pues el objetivo siempre fue este, ¿no? Este, buscar siempre mejorar, ¿no? Y, y cuando decidimos salir de Playa de Carmen, pues podemos haber tomado este rumbos diferentes, ¿no? Podemos haber regresado a Brasil o alguien ir para una ciudad, porque él tenía, tenía amigos en otra ciudad y yo no conocía a nadie. Uh -huh. Y... Y él no fue pues, con sus amigos que estaba y se quedó conmigo, ¿no? Entonces ya nos movemos a Puebla y pues bueno, lo restante ah, okay. es historia. So you're saying like they had a, a mutual friend from Brazil and like he connected him. He's like, hey man, I got a friend in Mexico, Alessandro. And they just kind of talked in over Facebook and stuff and kind of just kept motivating each other, right? Because they're both two foreign guys in a different country. And uh, he's saying that they had a, a real big decision to make, right? After they both were in Blay de Carmen, they either go back to Brazil or they kind of keep going down this path and they just stuck together. And that's when they moved to Puebla and he opened up his gym there and they both were Lux champions, uh, which is one of the, one of the bigger leagues out there. And mm -hmm. they've just been together ever since. And what made them make the move from Brazil to Mexico? Because a lot of people who don't know MMA, like the new MMA fans, they, they think yeah. they're Mexican. They don't know that they're actually Brazilian. Yeah. Como que, que fue el inicio para cada uno a mover a, a México? Uh, yo fui con una, una propuesta para dar clase en una academia ya con otros amigos. Ah, okay. eh, y cuando llegué a México era, era todo mentira. Nos, nos engañó una persona. Y ah. eh, nos dijo que tendríamos casa, comida, en, un empleo, ¿no? Algo, eh, una, una academia para dar clase. Wow. Y nos iban este, a, a pagar y íbamos a tener ah, tiempo yeah. para entrenar. Y cuando llego allá es totalmente diferente. Éramos cinco en un cuarto con una sola cama. No, yo, yo me dormí en el piso. Me dice, me dice eso. <laughs> no. He's saying that. Uh, so originally what had happened was he was supposed to, so just him, he was supposed to teach at a school in Mexico. And they were going to pay him, give him a house, like, like do the whole nine yards. He gets there. It was a complete lie. They like put five guys in like one room. Like there was no, like there was no budget to teach. Like he pretty much just got like, it was a big scam. And he flew there waiting, you know, like he flew to Mexico thinking that he was going to be there, set up with a house and food and payment and everything yeah. he needed to fight as well. Yeah. And then he got there and when he decided that there was nothing there for him and it was a scam, he just decided to so stay there. So, ¿qué, qué, ¿qué pasó cuando ya te dices cuenta que era una estafa y ya? ¿Cómo qué hiciste después de eso? Pues ya, ya no podía hacer mucho, ya, ya estaba ahí, ¿no? Yo solo me, les, les preguntaba a mi, a mi amigo, ¿qué, qué, ¿qué vamos a hacer? ¿Qué es lo que hay? Pues... Se pasó un mes, eh, se, se, se complicaron mucho las cosas, no, no teníamos que comer y mis amigos se, se regresaron para Brasil. Eh, para ellos fue un poco fácil porque sus papás le compraron sus boletos. ¿no? Ah, yo, sí. yo la verdad, yo sí, sí, sí chambié duro para comprar mi boleto. Entonces, pues en mi mente yo sabía cuánto que, que me costó. No, 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 no estoy hablando solo de dinero, sino de, de mi esfuerzo. ¿no? Sí. Yo sí, eh, sí, sí batallé para comprar sí. mi boleto y antes de, de salir de Brasil, mi, mi maestro dijo que, ¿no? que algo así iba a pasar. Me dijo, hey, sea lo que sea que pase, no quiero que, que, que tú vuelvas aquí para Manaus. Tienes una vida muy complicada. Eh, no hay nada aquí para, para, para ese deporte. ¿no? Eh, sea que sea lo que pase, eh, tienes que encontrar una, una salida. Mm. ¿MMA no era tan grande en, en Manaus en ese tiempo? Eh, sí, pero yo era más de yeah, Jiu-Jitsu. O sea, ah, yo, yo, sí. yo no, so he's, so he's no saying tenía. like, when he found out, he's like, man, like, I, I've already made this sacrifice. Like, dude, I've not just money, but like actual sacrifices in my life to get here. And his Jiu-Jitsu coach at the time was like, dude, like, I don't want you to come back here. Like, If you leave, like, I need you to leave and, and make it. So that's when he was like, man, like, I've already wow. sacrificed so much to get to this point. Like, why would I go back? Like, I, I need to make this happen. So, uh, y, y para ti, canal, ¿qué, qué, ¿qué era la decisión y por qué como te quedaste ahí en México? Sí, pues para mí fue, fue exactamente, no, no más fácil llegar allí, ¿no? Pero... Pues a mí me contrataron igual directo, ¿no? Ya con... A mí sí me cumplieron la, la palabra, ¿no? Este, pues la casa, la academia, el salario y todo. Pero, pues poco a poco el güey nos fue... Nos fue explorando, ¿no? Uh -huh. Se supone que tenía que dar dos clases al día, tres veces a la semana. Uh -huh. y, 
Y al final del día acabó quizás dando todas las clases de gimnasio, pues siete clases al día. Ya sabes, me estaba explorando pues, sí, más bien, ¿no? Sí. Y, y ya de fue cuando conocí a Alessandro. Y ya cuando se fue a, a Playa de Carlos, le dije, güey, pues puedo hablar con el dueño pues, para que tú trabajes aquí también. Uh -huh. Y le pagaba como 80 dólares al mes, güey. O sea, imagínate. Uh -huh. Pero ahí, pues con lo que ganaba yo, pues era para los dos. Y, y ya pues se quedó viviendo en la casa que yo estaba también. Uh -huh. Yeah, pues así nos tuvimos ayudando. Kind of. so, they, uh, so he had a similar setup, but like it wasn't a scam. Mm -hmm. He had actually a, a school in Blay de Carmen that helped him get set up and would pay him. And then he like convinced the owner to get him over there. And they were paying him 80 bucks a month to mm -hmm. survive. So essentially they would just like put their checks together. And, and that's just how they've been ever since. And now that they basically came from Mexico, now they're living full time in the U.S., getting ready for fights or do they still go back and do their training camps in Mexico? No. So Diego has his gym in Puebla. So that's where they do all their training camps at. They'll also train, uh, in Guadalajara with, with Lobo gym, uh, which is where Alexa and, and Irene train at too. They're not too far apart from each other. Um, but he does come out to the States to, you know, hang out with us and mm -hmm. spend time with, with Jason and Lisa and then, you know, whatever, stuff that we have out here for them so when they're training and getting ready for a ufc fight they both are still training together in puebla yep in the city yep. it's pretty high elevation there yeah right? la elevación que tan alto es allá en puebla la diferencia son de 300 pies de ciudad de méxico yeah it's like yeah. 3,000 <laughs> uh, and, feet above uh, sea level up there and then when they come to the u.s do, are they just coming here to hang out for their fights and then going back or do they also kind of stay have a camp here at all ever uh so primarily they just come like they'll come early for like like when lupe Godinez fought like he cornered her because diego and, and alessandro both corner a lot of like other fighters in mexico right and do they fly them into mexico yeah for sparring so, partners and yeah stuff? so they'll come out so like lupe Godinez fought four times this year they came out every time with lupe uh irene aldana alexa mm -hmm. like he was in the corner when alexa uh beat Shevchenko. So mm -hmm. they usually come out then and then they'll stay like two extra weeks and we'll train out here in Vegas or got it. Um you know they'll train with Moreno or whoever got we it. have out there in Vegas. So this is for uh Diego. Uh 298 Volks fighting again. So what does he think is gonna happen with Volk and Ilya? ¿Qué opinas de la pelea de Ilya y, y Volkanovski? Una pelea muy interesante, no es una pelea que puede pasar de todo. Pues la experiencia que tiene Volkanovski puede Puede manejar muy bien las cosas con la pelea, ¿no? Pero pues el día viene muy explosivo, muy explosivo también, ¿no? Entonces es una pelea que, que puede, puede pasar dos escenarios, ¿no? Si gana el día, pues los que están de top 5 para arriba, pues van a tener su oportunidad por el título otra vez, ¿no? Uh -huh. Si gana Volkanovski, si los que están abajo de top 5 para abajo pueden tener no, una oportunidad por el título, ¿no? Porque Volkanovski ya ganó a todos los que están en los top 5, ¿no? Entonces uh -huh. yo creo que... Por un lado, es mucho más conveniente que gane Volkanovski porque los que están abajo van a tener su oportunidad por el título. Pero si gana el día, pues toda, toda la división va a tener que trabajar más duro pues para tener su oportunidad por el título, ¿no? So you're saying it's a super interesting matchup. Uh, obviously, Volkanovski has the experience, but Ilya is like very explosive. It's a very explosive fight. Um, it's going to move a lot for the division, right? Because if Volkanovski wins then he's already beat the top five in the division right so it'll open up kind of everything below the top five like him to fight six seven eight nine or ten um but if Ilya wins then all those top five guys have to recycle for that top five spot so <clears throat> it's a really good opportunity for the division as a whole and he's excited for the fight i love it and is there anything special that he's doing and prepping and getting ready for when his next fight is announced like Is he out here training with anyone? Has he been working with any UFC fighters here in, in the States or he flies everybody into Mexico? Uh, para tu próxima pelea, cuando lo anuncian, ¿ustedes estás haciendo algo como diferente? ¿Estás entrenando con gente como diferente acá? ¿O vas a tener mucha gente que, que van a ir a Ciudad de México? No, pues nosotros tenemos un equipo sólido en México, ¿no? Este, ahorita, pues por finales de año y festas, pues está yo y Alessandro acá y pues seguimos entrenando entre los dos, ¿no? Uh -huh. Y con lo que nos manda nuestro coach también, pues por video y todo eso. Uh -huh. Pero, pues regresando a México, pues a trabajar con el equipo que tenemos, ¿no? Yo creo que tenemos un equipo de 8 o 10 personas que siempre está con nosotros trabajando uh -huh. y es lo que nos da dado buenos resultados, ¿no? Entonces yo creo que hay que seguir este, esta línea y pues solo seguir trabajando más duro. Yeah, so they they have a really solid team in Mexico. Uh, they've got about eight or nine guys that they're building up. Um, 
so they train with them. Like that's their main training yeah. partners. But when they come out here, like they'll still train. Uh, they train with Jiva Santana over at one jiu-jitsu this week. Like Got it. They'll, they'll get extra work with, uh, Chewy over at raw talent. Um, their coach out in Mexico, uh, Pancho Grasso will send them different videos and stuff for them to work. But like, they feel like they have the the good environment and the solid team that they don't need to bring yeah. other people in. Do they train at all with Moreno or Raul? Rosa uh, Jr. Ustedes entrenan con con Brandon y Raul también? Pues entrené, yo creo que con Raul entrené una vez nada más, este hace mucho tiempo de las primeras veces que vi en Las Vegas y con Brandon pues un par de veces he entrenado con él en Las Vegas. Yeah, so they, they've trained with Raul once and then they've trained with Brandon a couple times. Yeah, Bra uh, Brandon and them We'll come like they try to coordinate the training times and uh -huh. they all came in. It's funny because when he actually he was joking with Brandon's wrestling coach, mm -hmm. uh, when mm -hmm. he was like, Hey, like my next fight, I'm gonna hit a flying triangle because we were going over takedown defense. Yeah. And it's funny because we actually have the cameras in the gym and like we scroll back and he like showed the exact same move that he was gonna hit on uh, the flying triangle. And, and he was like, See, I told you guys I was gonna do it. So, <laughs> and, yeah. and are they using their are they all both using the same coaches? For their camps, like yep. they both have the same wrestling coach, same striking coach, same yep. jujitsu coach. Yeah, so they do uh, all their teamwork stuff. They'll do with like Lobo MMA. Got it. So Pancho Grasso, I think, is probably one of the greater minds to come out of uh, Mexico or Latin America. He's head coach for both of them. Yeah, yeah. Pancho's the head yeah, coach. Head so coach. Pancho's the head coach of Alexa, Irene, Lupe Godinez, uh, Diego, it. a lot of these guys. So that's that's the head. That's the head guy. He's I think he's a wizard. I love uh, it. Coach from Latin America. For, uh, for Alessandro, what's your thoughts on the Roval and, and the Pantoja fight? ¿Qué opinaste de la pelea de Roival y Pantoja? Pues fue una pelea muy inteligente por parte de, de, de Pantoja. No, él fue inteligente en querer amarrar ahí la, la pelea en, en algunas eh, situaciones que le, que le, que le convenió. Eh, creo que... Eh, pues yo sabía que, que, que Roval, los que vieron su última pelea, eh, pues él estaba básicamente dominando la, la pelea contra Pantoya, ¿no? Pues Pantoya sabía si él qui, quisiera pues, strikear con, con, con Roval, le, le iba mal, uh -huh. ¿no? Y creo que la, que la mejor manera de, 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 de ganar esa pelea era yendo al piso y fue lo que hizo él. Yeah, so you're saying that it, it was a really good fight. I mean, he felt like... Pantoja really fought smart, right? Like it was going really bad for him mm -hmm. on the feet and he felt like the only way for him to win that fight was in the grappling exchanges. So he felt like it was a good strategy, but it just, you know, Pantoja just executed what he needed to do. Yeah, it seemed like it seemed like Revol was obviously throwing hands and trying to keep him away and using the jab, but it just didn't seem like anything was doing enough damage yeah. to, to stuff those takedowns or to kind of put him on the ground, right? Yeah. Um, three fights, three fight performance bonuses. You know, how is he racking up these these bonuses? How is he doing this over and over and over again? Tres peleas, tres bonos. ¿Cómo lo hagas? Pues yo tenía un objetivo bien claro desde cuando cuando no estaba dentro del UFC, ¿no? Yo hablaba de para mi coach de que cuando yo llegara ahí, mi objetivo iba a ser siempre ir por los bonos, ¿no? Independiente de ganar o perder, iba por los bonos. Obvio, pues con lo, lo objetivo de ganar, ¿no? Y pues, bueno, tres peleas que te digo, ¿no? Tres peleas, tres bonos. Estoy podiendo ayudar a bastante gente. Estoy podiendo ayudar a mi equipo, mi familia y pues, mis compañeros también. Uh, I mean, his, his whole goal when he got to the UFC was to have bonus level fights. Like, obviously you want to win, but he wanted to go for the bonus. He wanted something excited. He wanted to be that guy that like people wanted to watch. So, I mean, three fights, three bonuses, like it's going as planned and it's going to continue to go as, as such. Amazing. As they go into the 2024 year as partners, as they train together, as they as they work together as friends and a team, and obviously you guys have an amazing agency as you guys are always so tight with each other. What can we look for? UFC 299, UFC 300. Is there any special big announcements? Is there anything that uh, the fans should know? Uh, entrando este año como parejas de entrenamiento, como parejas de negocio, como que hay las cosas que, que, que quieren que los fans sepan este año. Hay algo que quieren anunciar o están emocionados de platicar. ¿Qué que esperan los fans en 2024? Pues puede esperar siempre lo mejor de nosotros, ¿no? Yo creo que nosotros hemos hecho un buen trabajo tanto como coach como como peleadores, ¿no? Este, yo y Alessandro, pues en el gimnasio somos los encargados de la parte de jiu-jitsu, de lucha y pues a veces poner algunas estrategias, ¿no? Y pues el objetivo es seguir escalando en nuestra, 
en nuestras carreras, ¿no? Pues tanto yo contra Alessandro, pues buscar entrar en el top 15, seguir ayudando a Irene y Alexa, pues para Alexa, pues a mantener su título, Irene, pues a llegar a contender por el título otra vez, a Lupe Godínez para seguir escalando, ¿no? Y pues también el objetivo es traer más este peleadores de nuestro equipo para dentro del UFC. Uh, I think just the mission stays the same, right? Like continue to grow as coaches. I mean, they're both running their academy together. They run the jiu-jitsu program. They run the wrestling. Um, just continue to grow as coaches, as an athlete, right? Get into the top 15 and, um, you know, help Alexa retain her title and help Irene get to the title. Lupe Gudin is also coming up in the ranking. So, you know, just continue to, to grow as a team. Are they really close with Alexa, both of them? Yeah. That you guys, they're like three best friends or what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They're, the tr That's the one thing I'll say about like Lobo Gym. Like yeah. I think the culture is really good there. Uh, Who, who's the full team there? Like any, any big names besides Alexa and them? Uh, Alexa, Alexa Grasso, Irene Aldano, yeah. uh, Lupe Gudinez, uh, quien más? Diego, Alessandro. Pues nosotros y, y pues bueno, hay otros chavos también que estamos ayudando bastante para que llegue yeah, a las grandes ligas. There's a, there's a ton of up and coming talent that's coming up there. I feel like the... Brazilian Warriors is their gym, and then Lobo Gym is where the, their main like training yeah. quarters. Yeah. But I feel like both of those locations will have a ton of guys that get mm -hmm. into the UFC in the next couple of years. Um, a lot of like our UFC athletes are actually starting to go to Mexico. Like Jamie Horth, she went down there, spent a month down there. Got it. Um, the, in a couple of weeks, we'll, we'll you'll start seeing more guys in Puebla training for that UFC uh, Mexico card that's coming in February. Do either of them get any uh, mat time or any sparring time with Alexa? Uh, yeah, that, I mean that's his jiu-jitsu. That's her jiu-jitsu coach is, is yeah. Diego. Dice que que ustedes tienen tiempo en el tatami con con Alexa. Sí, nosotros empezamos a trabajar con ellos en 2018. Yeah, este, so they started working together in 2018. Alessandro wow. empezó trabajando primero con Alexa mm -hmm. cuando ella trabajaba, bueno, cuando ella peleaba en 115, no, pues por el tamaño mm -hmm. y todo eso. He was working with y, her when she was fighting at 2018. Y ya cuando Alexa pues subió a 125, pues empecé a trabajar con ella, nada más continuó el trabajo que Alessandro ya había hecho con ella, no, entonces yo creo que ya trabajando entre los dos, entre yo y Alessandro, pues para dar un, una buena calidad de entrenamiento para Alexa es lo que la, la ha traído a, a ser campeona. So he was working with, with Alexa when she was at 115, obviously because of the size. Yeah. Uh, once she went up to 125, that's when she started training with Alessandro, or sorry, Diego. <laughs> uh, but I think he, what he was saying is like, I think she has the best of both worlds of both of our styles of jiu-jitsu. So I feel like that that's what really has put her in the position uh, to be prepared for where she's at right now as a champ. How old was Alessandro when he started training jiu-jitsu? Uh, ¿Qué año empezas uh, haciendo jiu-jitsu? ¿Qué edad? Se entrenaba en 2010, iba a cumplir 14 años. He was 14. 14, and you? ¿Cuándo empezaste? Desde, desde iniciar. De, desde la panza de su mamá, estaba con las tripas ahí. Con... So his dad, a los 5 años. Yes, I, so his dad is a legend of jiu-jitsu in Brazil, yeah. like, long time. ¿Cuándo tu papá va a ser uh, coral belt? ¿Cuándo? Ahorita tiene 5 grados, creo que unos, son más 6, ¿no? 7. No, por 5, no. Él tiene cinco. Dos. Dos. No es seis y ya bien coral. Falta como diez años, acho, más o menos, ¿no? Sí. Como diez años. Yeah, so ten years his, his dad will have a coral belt, which is like... Yeah. Yeah. For a, lot of, a lot of people <laughs> that are watching this, a coral belt takes, I think, like ten years after being a black yeah. belt, after a certain age, right? Yeah, so, so like he's been... Son, son 30, 30 años solo de, de cinturón. Yeah, 30, 30, 31 years of just being a black belt. That's when you can be be a, a it coral takes belt. thirty years after being a black belt. Yeah. So thirty one years, and then you can get your coral belt, which is that red and yeah. white belt that we always see. Who is it? Uh, which one of the Gracies? ¿Cuál Gracie lo tiene? Oh, oh todo, varios, de, todo, de, varios de ellos. Yeah, there's so like a ton of coral. His, his, yeah, 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 he has an uncle that's like a coral belt too. But like pretty much all the OG Gracies but all have. Do they train with one of the Gracies that has a coral belt? Uh, tu tío, tu tío, tu papá han entrenado con los Gracies que no. tienen un coral. No. No. No, no, they're in a different part of Brazil. Mm -hmm. They're Got in it. Manaus. Like all his family's in Got Manaus. It. Ten more years, your dad will have a coral belt. Yeah. So that yes, means your, años tu, your dad tu will, will have been a black belt for thirty-one years. Yeah. Wow. And so he, he still is in Brazil teaching. Yeah. yeah. Wow. When he when he won his tu primera, verdad, compraste lo el tatami para el gimnasio. Ah, sí, ahorita lo final lo cuando fui a Manaus. Yeah, so he like he bought his dad all new mats, like he bought his mom un refrigerador, like. See, I like these guys. They're yeah. the best. They were in here on Christmas Day, having the time of their life. Very respectful, <laughs> very humble. I think a lot of people will get to know them more as your English gets a little bit better. You guys do more interviews. People are gonna love them. They're they're like superstars in the making, bro. Yeah. Great energy always. 
Before we go, we have a video I want to show you guys. We're going to flip this camera around and I want to see I want to see what you guys think about this knockout. Tell me tell me what you guys think. We're going to we're going to run this up. Get in, get oh. So for 2024, okay, uh, we are announcing the 2023 Jackson of the Year Award. So the Jackson podcast is going to have a 2023 award ceremony. And for the rookie of the year for 2023 in the UFC is Diego Lopez. Que tú eres el, el ganador del premio del, and, del debutante del año. And some UFC superstars that were on the panel to decide this were guys like Chuck Liddell, Tyron Woodley, Rampage Jackson. Que ellos eran los nombres que, que eligieron tu, tu posición. And they went through it and they just see a, a, a lot of star power, a lot of respect, but a, a lot of strides are being taken now, I think, at your age and now with the experience and what you have. Along with myself, as we see your fights, we see kind of just, it's very fluid, very polished. It's getting better and better. So obviously we know you're a superstar in the making. We know that the talent that he has and what he can do in the UFC, people are going to be blown away. And we see that the way they are working and how hard they are working, it's, it's an amazing recipe for success. So as we go into this knockout of the year was given to Josh Emmett. <laughs> so let's see what Josh could do here against Doug Nasty. Oh, <laughs> Qué feo. That's got to hurt, huh? Qué feo, carnal. Dos cosas, qué bonito y qué feo, ¿no? Like he's saying, like, dude, like how beautiful and like how ugly that is, right? Like you're like, man, like poet. it's, it's he's like a poet over here. It's mixed emotions. But ask him, why, why does Emmett look like he's 30 pounds heavier than Thug Nasty? Que por qué Josh Emmett se mira más pesado que, que Thug Nasty. Ah, es Come on, hey, next video, please. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, I don't know if see Thug Nasty like that. That's our guy. Yo, why, why does he look like 30 pounds heavier? Que por qué se mira tan como pesado. Nada más. Pues yo creo que no se ve pesado, así es su, él es, es su, su, su complexión. Su yo cuerpo. creo que, exactamente, yo creo que ha, ha estado igual que las peleas pasadas, no, no veo tanta diferencia. What's he saying? He was saying that like, I think that's just how he is. Like he just looks, he's always looked big. He's always looked like somebody bigger in the division. Got it. And, And In this fight, we have Anthony Smith, one of the best uh, analysts in the game right now, obviously a veteran in him in his own right. You know, and he's going against Roundtree. He's an amazing, you know, amazing kicks, amazing uh, kickboxing, amazing yeah. Muay Thai. And look at the hammer punch. Like Thor, he just stands over him. What about the respect? Do you think, is that too much respect? Should he have just gone straight down? ¿Qué opinas del, del respeto que tiene Khalil? ¿Que, que ¿Tú opinas que él debería darle el, el golpe o es bueno que, que paró la pelea así? Pues yo creo que, que él fue consciente, ¿no? Vio cómo cayó Anthony Smith y pues el jefe también hizo un buen trabajo, ¿no? Yo creo que si el jefe no hubiera ponido en frente, yo creo que él hubiera seguido con el golpe, ¿no? Pero bueno, como vemos, no fue necesario y el jefe también hizo un buen trabajo. He's saying that it's like, dude, like that's really intelligent for Khalil to think like that, but that's also a really good job on the referee for, you know, stepping in and stopping that fight like that too. So obviously, if he sees a guy get knocked down like that, He's going to give the guy the blessing of waiting for the ref to step in or would he have gone in and just straight attack to finish it at this level in his career? <laughs> Dice que si tú estabas en la posición de Khalil, tú tienes el como en mentalidad de parar así o tú sigues <laughs> más más. <laughs> más. <laughs> es que es algo que no 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 podemos contestar si sí o si no porque no pues no es diferente. Sí. E igual es alguien que sabía de su técnica, de su poder y, te, y tiene mucha visión. Sí. Entonces, él, él, él vio que su golpe entró y que el güey ya no yo no, yo no traía nada, ¿no? Pues estaba... Eh, de, la, de la manera como cayó, pues él, él, él estaba consciente que la pelea ya, ya sí. se iba a terminar ahí. He's saying, like, I, I think it's hard to say right in the moment. Like, you're like, man, like, yeah, would I have done that or would I have jumped on him or not? But yeah. he's like, I think that's a testament to just Khalil, right? Like, he knows his power. He knows what he can do. And yeah. I think, obviously, when you're in the moment, it's 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 kind of one of those moment, moment by moment things. I love it. So before we go, I appreciate these guys stepping in. Excited for people to kind of get a, a little behind the scenes of who they are. I know we have a translator. He's doing the best he can. Sorry, guys. They're, you know, he's they doing found, a lot. They found me on the street. He's doing a lot over here. Normally, he's over here at the weight cuts. He's I've seen him at the UFC events and the fights with their agency and with the boys. He's he's in the sauna with his fighters. I mean, he's not on the mats with them or in the gym with them, but he's definitely in the sauna with them. And uh, basically, what, what I want to know is his favorite fighter growing up, who kind of inspired him the most to be a, a UFC fighter? ¿Quién te inspiró a ser peleador de, de UFC? Pues hay alguien, alguien que todavía me, que me sigue inspirando, ¿no? Desde que conocí a ese peleador, eh, vi su historia de vida y aparte saber que eres del mismo lugar que yo es algo que, que me motivó más y hasta el día de hoy veo sus peleas, veo sus videos, ¿no? Es algo que me sigue motivando. 
José Aldo, ¿no? Pues, el tiene rey. Una, tiene una no, carrera rey. increíble, fue una, fue una leyenda. Y, ¿Qué tipo de persona también? Y yo me acuerdo que cuando empecé a entrenar Jiu-Jitsu, uh, yo tenía como un mes, estaban comentando ahí en la, en la academia que él iba a tener una pelea. Ajá. En WEC, era WEC. Uh -huh. Ajá, entonces... No, BBC. Ajá, uh -huh. y fue la primera vez que lo vi. Eh, todos nos, nos juntamos para ver la pelea y lo vi. Uh -huh. Y desde ahí empecé a, 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 a conocerlo más, ¿no? Pues a ver más videos sí. de él y su historia me ha, me ha motivado. Él, él tiene una película... Se llama Más fuerte que el mundo. Es una película muy buena. Ah, se, okay. la, se la recomiendo. Y es algo también que van, van a saber un poquito más de, 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 de quién es él, ¿no? Más de su vida personal, ¿no? De, de cómo, cómo es, fue el principio. ¿Es nuevo? ¿Ah? ¿Es nuevo o te, 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 ya tiene tiempo? No, ya tiene como cinco años, más o menos. Ah, okay. uh, he's just saying, like, Jose Aldo is obviously a legend down there. Like, he remembers that when he fought... The, ¿Con quién peleó en esa WC? Sí, no me acuerdo, cara. That he like uh, that Jose I Aldo. Just <laughs> that Jose Aldo had a a fight in WC, and he remembers like his first month doing jiu-jitsu That they were talking about him, and he's just like that. He has a movie too that came out, and he's like, dude, like that. Just the type of person he is, the type of fighter he is, is just an absolute legend. Yeah. Para ti, gonna? Para mí, yo creo que pues mi hermano. <laughs> ah, okay. Sí, mi hermano fue. Pues es, His brother. ya sabe como mucho tiempo pues mi familia siempre ha estado en el deporte, ¿no? Entonces, sí. así la primera persona que vi pelear en vivo, así como ir a una pelea, pues fue mi hermano, ¿no? Entonces yo creo que desde ahí fue cuando yo di cuenta que pues quería seguir estos pasos, ¿no? Entonces, sí. es algo como hasta chistoso, ¿no? Lo, lo que estoy logrando ahorita, pues es un, un objetivo que pues mi familia siempre ha tenido, ¿no? De que alguien pues pudiera llegar a pelear en una en una gran empresa, ¿no? Y sí. pues bueno, ahora que logré tener eso, bueno, logré hacer pelear en UFC, pues es el sueño de toda la familia, ¿no? Sí. Uh, he's saying that his brother like really inspired him, right? He's the first person he saw fighting yeah. in public and, you know, obviously every fighter has that dream of like, you know, fighting at the top level and, you know, now that he's made it, like he feels like his family gets to like enjoy that moment with him. So, and It's like, good. I don't know if you've ever seen the videos, Uh, when they all watch his fight, like his whole city shuts down and yeah. they're like all watch it at his gym. Like, yeah. I don't know if you guys can pull it up on his Instagram, but like, yeah. dude, there's, there's some pretty crazy, like hundreds of people all lined up just to watch it. And it's like the, the Sabatini one was probably, was probably one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I love it. And uh, before we go, last question for Diego, who has the best jujitsu in the UFC besides him? ¿Quién, ¿Quién opinas que tienes el mejor jujitsu? Diego López. En el, en el UFC. Afuera de ti. <laughs> uh, mejor jiu-jitsu. Pues a mí me gusta mucho ahorita lo que ha demostrado tener un buen jiu-jitsu pues para mí es este Sean Brand, Brad, Brad. Sean Brady? Sean Brand, sí. Mm -hmm. Pues la verdad es que a mí me, me gusta mucho como... Ah, sí. Look, see, there's the videos. <laughs> como, como ha peleado y siento que tiene un buen jiu-jitsu y pues tiene un buen control también. This is a video of your neighborhood in Brazil, right? <laughs> yeah. How do you say, say the name? ¿Cómo, cómo dices el, el Mentaro, ciudad? Mentaro. Oh, ¿Cómo dices el ciudad? El barrio, pues, bueno, la ciudad el barrio, es, sí. ajá, es en Manaus y, y el barrio pues, este, pues es Muchirón, ¿no? Es el barrio que yo crecí y pues bueno, toda la gente que está en este video pues es mi familia, amigos y It's gente like que entra en el gimnasio. Family, and the streets are just gym. filled with all of your family and friends and they're watching on a big projector. <laughs> and, and it seems like you're like the, the town hero. Do you go back and do you get the love from the city? They show you tons of love. Que cuando tú regresas sientes como el amor del ciudad, como sientes como que, que todos te apoyan en tu, pues en este deporte. Sí, claro. O sea, la verdad es que pues, siempre que regresemos ahí, pues es muy, muy padre, pues que la gente siempre va a ir a mi casa, pues a saludarme, a verme y así, ¿no? Uh -huh. Ahorita en octubre, pues de hecho iniciamos básicamente el campamento allá y Alessandro estaba conmigo, pues en Brasil, ahí pues todo el día estaba en mi casa y pues él también vio, pues de cómo, ah, sí. cómo es la oh, gente sí, con sí. nosotros, así, pues yeah, se siente like bien padre. They, so he took, he took Alessandro and like two or three of his other teammates down there. To, they did like a mini training camp down there, just preparing for this last fight. They were eating and just like wow. said, like the people were... were Just super gracious and, and just gave him a lot of love. So, you know, it's amazing to have you guys on here. We wanted to do a quick little episode. We wanted people to kind of listen to you. And we also wanted to make sure that he could hear in person that he got the, the Jackson podcast first ever <laughs> annual awards rookie of the year. We're excited for everything you're going to do. We're excited for Alessandro and all the love they've been showing Jackson this year. Um, hopefully you guys love the chains and love all the all the clothing and everything they've been given. And we're excited to watch 299 and 300 to see if they're on there and what we got at Fight Night in Mexico. 
Let's go. Awesome. Appreciate it. Make sure you guys leave a comment. Jackson Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, oh, share. And we got one more. We got one more thing. Get in there. Alessandro pregunta se pode salir con la moto. Alessandro rides the motorcycle again. You, yesterday, yeah. he jumped on the motorcycle. Okay, make sure he hears this. And he peels off through my office in second gear. Jason like that. Stop, bro, please. <laughs> How is Jason? How is Jason? Yeah. Yeah, call, call. Yeah. Jason, our, my CEO, calls me and goes, Bro, I can't go anywhere with this kid. He sees a motorcycle and he takes off. We, we were just at, at the Monster headquarters. We're like, be, be careful, man. Please be careful. All time, all time. Yeah. Hey, trust be careful, me, trust bro. Me, bro. Be trust careful, me. bro. Is the con cell phones? Be careful, bro. Be careful, bro. <laughs> and I say, bro, relax, man. It's me, bro. He trust rides me, motorcycle. Me, okay. he, he rides a motorcycle in Mexico. Just so like, you understand, it's Christmas Day. It's pitch black. This guy's like, I'm like, hey, you know how to shift in gears? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fills the whole office up with gas, right? Everybody was about to pass out. Then he peels off through the office, but none of the lights are on. So Jason goes, he's driving in the dark. We have a brand new 20,000 square foot facility here. <laughs> and all you hear is, wah, 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 wah. And he's doing donuts in, in people's offices. Bro. Then then I look in the dark like I, Batman. Here comes Bane. <laughs> wah, Bro, through Jay, the office. Jason, Jay, like... like <laughs> hey, Jason, Jason, me marca me say, Alessandro es muy malo. <laughs> and then we just got brand new jujitsu mats, uh -huh. you know, and he's doing wheelies over the jujitsu mats right here in the, in the gym. <laughs> uh, uh, the guy hey, thought he was in a freestyle no, no, competition. No nos van a dejar regresar. <laughs> one life, one chance, man. <laughs> hey, listen, let this guy live, but keep the bikes away from him going into the fights. Nah, Moving man, forward, nah, no bikes. They, I mean, anytime we bring our guys here, man, they have so much fun. Like, that's a big testament to you, Bear. Like, we really appreciate everything you do for us. And, like, that's, I think moments like this are, like, funny, but, like, They feel comfortable coming here. You they know can what I do mean? whatever they want. This house is their house. We're building the brand new sports performance center. Yep. We have brand new mats. We have a ring coming in. The we bags have four are four new bats. We have all these bags, all of them against the wall. We have a brand new boxing club, fight club, and we're doing all this so that way when guys like these guys, you know, world champion caliber fighters can come in here and go on the podcast and get training and then get recovery with the hyper ice station and then go do some rolls, get some, get some, whatever they need done in terms of like the recovery and the sports performance and then hit the weights and hit the bag. So we're trying to make it an all inclusive stop. People come here, they can work out, hit the podcast, get brand new chains. All of our jewelry is real gold, real silver made in Italy. So when they come, they can kind of get a nice selection of a little bit of everything and our new performance wear and our, and our luxury wear. Unreal. So Unreal. let everybody kind of come here. We are out. This is the Jackson Podcast. These boys are going to be <laughs> rising UFC superstars. You're going to see a lot of them. Make sure you guys check it out. Big thanks to Jacob and their agency and Jason House. And we're excited to kind of announce the Jackson Podcast 2023 MMA Awards. So make sure you guys check that. And if you want exclusive access, go check out the Discord. I'm Bear DeGidio. We out. Peace.